Well, that was a huge bummer. So as you can see, just got the car back together, was getting pretty excited. Went out for a drive, came back, and saw that my radiator was squirting fluid out the front, which is never a good sign. Upon closer inspection, and I'll show you here more in a minute, um, there was actually more wrong than I initially thought. But first things first, that water looked terrible. So I rigged up a system, pulled the radiator out. Obviously that's gonna have to get replaced, but I rigged up a system that's gonna allow me to flush the radiator. Now don't worry, I drained all the coolant out. This is just residual water. Hook it up to a hose. I know some people will disagree. Fired up the hose, started up the engine, and then you can see that water is nasty in there. But as you let it run for a while and everything flushes through, it gets clearer and clearer and clearer, and eventually the water's totally clear. So got everything flushed out with water, dried the whole system out, and now we are ready to talk about what went wrong and also what we're gonna do to make this thing better. So obviously, Huge bummer, this is a brand new fan, and as you can see, it totally came apart. You can see where individual fan blades snapped off. Basically half of the fan blades snapped off, and I really truly think that is what destroyed this radiator because this radiator itself was fine otherwise. But you can see, I'll probably have to find it. It's kind of hard, but basically there's a distinctive spot somewhere up here uh, well sorry this is the inside so it would be on the other side where the fan blade i think it came off it got caught and it ripped and it basically tore into the radiator and destroyed it so it's huge bummer um but i was able to get a brand new radiator unfortunately i had to pay for that radiator um summit racing did replace the fan free of charge these fans are about 70 dollars, and it is a small fan so it shouldn't, in theory, be a cheap fan. But anyways, we won't talk about that too much. Um, I did get a brand new radiator from Champion. These are two different manufacturers. I'm a little bit curious if they're made in the same location because when you look at these things, I mean, obviously this one got painted black at some point. It was a little bit beat up. But they are, like, identical, okay? So I am very hopeful that I can just drop this in and bolt it in. Um, so we'll have the new fan, the new radiator. I did the flush, as you saw earlier and got everything opened up in here. And I went ahead and got some hoses. These hoses are from CJ Pony Parts. Um, these are all for like a 65, 66 Mustang. And here are the hoses that came out of the car. One of the big differences here is this lower radiator hose has no spring in it, whereas the replacement does. You can't squish this, it's hard. Um, so that one probably should have had a spring in it. I just got a whole new hose set from these guys, um, even the little guy right here. The only things I noticed is Size-wise, they're a tiny bit different, so chances are I'm gonna have to cut this down just to make everything work. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and see how quickly we can get this in the car. So the good news here is I did have the old radiator and fan. So I'm trying to mock everything up and basically reuse the mounts. The new fan comes with all new mounts and hardware, but I already have the exact same fan. So I'm trying to mock everything up off the car. And I can tell you from installing this in a prior video inside the car, it's much easier to do this on the bench. Um, I am cutting some stuff here, which we'll talk about in a second, and this may or may not have led to why the fan broke. I'm not exactly sure, but I will show you the spacers that I made. Here's me just cutting some spacers to length, filing them down, and we'll talk about them here in a second. Okay, in case you were wondering what I was doing different this time, I did notice, and this is just the way these fans are set up, you know, I took the brackets from the old fan, moved them over to the new fan because I already had them cut. You know, it's the same exact parts, but there's a gap, right? That's just the way these things are set up. You know, if they had a different style of mount that went all the way down, it wouldn't be like this. But there's a gap, and, and not surprisingly, it's the thickness of this. My only thought is when you tighten this down, right, like when I do that, it lifts up the other side of the fan. Well, you can imagine when I tighten all four of those down, it's going to flex that housing ever so much. So I wonder if that's actually what led to some of the stress here was that flexion. So um, I went ahead and measured and again, it's like not an exact science, but I got all four of these to be roughly 400 thousandths and they'll slide perfectly under there, tighten it down. And you're still, you'll are still you still get some, some push here, but you're not bending the fan blades anymore or the fan housing, I should say. So just my little idea. Um, you don't have to do this, but take it from somebody who just had a failure on theirs and uh, this might make it better. 
Not surprisingly, this one fit in pretty much like a glove. I didn't have to make any modifications. So if you have like a 64 Comet or Falcon, maybe even a Mustang, this is a really solid radiator for you. Um, I would say be careful that it doesn't flop forward and hit the bolts for the water pump because you can damage little fins like I did there, but just super minor stuff. It bolts nicely in place. And uh, then I'll show you the hoses that I got from CJ Pony Parts and what I had to do to make those work on this application. All right, so I got that little tiny hose connected as well as the upper radiator hose. Um, unfortunately, I cut my lower hose incorrectly. And these aren't a direct fit, which is fine because they're listed for a Mustang. So, you know, we tried, but I was able to get the spring and use, you know, two thirds of the kit. So I'm putting the spring inside of my old lower radiator hose, which will again, keep this thing from collapsing. Um, and uh, go ahead and install this. Somewhere along the line, I lost one of these clamps, so I gotta get one more of those, but that's fine. I've gotta go get coolant anyway. They recommend peak for this, so I'll pick up some peak coolant, probably get myself a new overflow line to my catch can, and then we'll be done, ready to fire this thing up. If you don't have one of these already, these like little, I think they're made by Lyle. Um, it's a little thing that slides into where your radi radiator cap is, and then it allows you to add coolant really easily. That thing's super trick, so I highly recommend getting one of those. I did get myself some new 516 heater hose to run to my overflow, and then here we are just filling it up. Uh, we'll go ahead and start in a second and check for leaks. I think it took about two gallons to start, and I'm sure it'll take more after we get it running. Got this thing fired up. Everything is going pretty well. Just need to let it come up to temperature. Um, it honestly took a while to get this thing up to temp. Eventually the fan did come on, but I did have to take it out and drive it uh, to get this thing to even get the thermostat to open. It is running so cool right now. Well, seems like it's good as new. Went around and drove it, even chased it a little bit. Honestly, the temp never came above like right in the middle. And granted, it is, you know, almost winter time, so it's cooler outside, but it seems to be working fine. Um, I definitely, I eventually got the thermostat to open right at the very end. So hopefully that burped out any remaining air and then we'll let it cool down overnight, throw some more cooling in it tomorrow. Hopefully we're good. Um, fan kicks on right when it should. I looked at the temp gauge, comes on right above the middle mark, which is 180 and it's a 185 fan. So it should come on at 185 and shut off at 165, I think. Seems to be working, so thumbs up for the Champion Radiator. Let's just hope this fan holds together. That was crappy. So I'm waiting to hear back from Be Cool on that. I'll update you guys with what I hear back. Supposedly there are guys out of town who can help with this sort of stuff. So anyways, more to come on that, but so far, so good. Thanks for watching.